All right, guys, how's everyone doing today? <clears throat> Good to see you all here. How's it going? Who have we got in the room today? Let's have a look. Uh, <clears throat> oh, a lot of you, hi. Uh, Maria DeVoe, Janan, <clears throat> Danny Mahoney, how's it going? Jessica Morrow, hi. The Wonder Donut, sounds tasty. Jesse Lombardi, hi, how's it going? Adam Rogers, Jasmine, Aaron, Barry Clifton, Rich, how you doing, Rich? My partner in crime on We Audition is in the house. Uh, who else have we got? I am Philip Andrew. Hi. Studio NYC. How's it going? Jean from Berlin. West Fable. West, you've been getting great reviews on We Audition. Thank you. Aaron, you too. Um, we really appreciate you guys. Sherry Mendes. Seen you on the, the platform a lot recently as well. Good to see you. Thanks for joining. So um, today we, hi from Bulgaria, this is awesome. People from around the world. So today we are talking to um, Christina Latour from uh, Latour De Force Productions. Christina is, um, runs a demo reel company um, and gives actors advice on their demo reels um, and also, uh, you know, helps them create perfect demo reels for uploading to all of those kind of uh, websites and places that you use them. Emily Moore, what's going on? How's it going? So I'm just going to have a look and see if Christina's in here with us. Um, uh, by the way, guys, before we ju jump on there, um, we've got a bunch of uh, really cool Instagram filters uh, that we just launched. If you guys haven't seen them yet, I'll go through them quickly now just so you can see them. There's one that puts the We Audition logo behind you, wherever you are. That's kind of kind of fun, right? Um, and then there's this one that says, find me on We Audition. So if you want people to find you on We Audition, you can do that. There's one that changes your background to the We Audition logo, if you want to support. Um, there is these cool ones, which are the We Audition glasses. I might wear these today, actually, for the whole thing. Um, there is a self-tape camera. It doesn't really tape you, it's just a bit of fun. Um, and there is this one, which is great. My next job will be, and if you press and hold that, um, let's have a look. Does that work? Uh, press and hold, it says. I think if you're doing a story, it would work. And then there's this one, something I could do with my acting career. And it generates some good ideas to see um, what you might like to, uh, to do next. So it gives you a little task list. Anyway... Anyway, you can find those if you go onto our main Instagram page and then just <clears throat> underneath uh, the main the main sort of section of the bio, you'll see them there. Uh, so go and have a check out those. It's, it's like next to reels. If you look at posts and then reels and then uh, photos you're tagged in, there's one that shows the filters. Anyway, let me get back to a reasonable filter and I'm going to try and find Christina. She's see if she's in here. <clears throat> Let's hear the force. There we go. Sending a request in. Rich says, oh, it's live. Yeah, that's the one you, you made for us, Rich. Rich. Rich has all the credit for that one. Christina. Hey. How are you doing? How are Good you? to see you. I'm here. great. Good to see you, Darren. We've got a lovely uh, group of people from all around the world in here to see you today. How have you been? We, we met back in, uh, in late 2019 in New York, right? We did, yes. Mm. We met a couple times. Uh, I know I went to one of your gatherings, one of your back networking. Back when gatherings things. were a thing, right? Back when, when that was a thing, yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, we I, could actually think, meet up in person. Right, yes. I think um, we had spoken before that, but we officially met at, at the gathering, yes. Yeah, cool. How, how's everything for you? Is it going well? Are you in New York right now? It is. I am in New York. <laughs> um, you know, it's almost like a spring day out here. I didn't, I didn't need to layer up today, so that was good. Oh, um, wonderful. <laughs> it's it's so, been a little chilly. So tell us well, about been... Latour Productions um, and all the different things you do and offer for actors. Yes. You know, I'm just going to turn, I meant to turn my fan off. One second. I just don't want any. Okay. That's surprising. Come back. Thank you. <laughs> Love it. Love it. <laughs> These are pretty fun, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I love the brand centricness of it all. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, tell us about Latour Productions and what you do for actors. Right. So, Latour de Forest Productions, I create 
reels for actors, mm -hmm. actors who already have their footage and want to create a reel to send out to their uh, representatives. Um, I do reels. I also do clips for you because, you know, some representation wants you to have uh, clips that are more, uh, I'll use the word brand centric again. So, uh, you know, I, I do that. I, I suss that out. And, and then, but also put reels, but it, it's, it's just from footage that actors already have. And you've done hundreds or thousands of these reels over the years, right? Sometimes it feels like thousands. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> but I've done quite a few. I've been doing this uh, since 2006. Great. So, so um, ideally an actor would come to you with, with some footage or a reel they've got and you're helping them really finesse that so they can get their their best brand out in the, the sort of casting. What have you noticed the changes to be recently in more recent years? Has there been any developments in the way that reels are done? Yes, the significant development has been short and sweet. Right. People want to see, you know, I think our attention spans these days are very short anyway. And so imagine a casting director or an agent who's sitting in an office and who, ha who has like, you know, 300 actors for one role and they have to look at all of their footage, you know, they're, they're not going to sit there for five minutes. They're just not. So, so really it's short, sweet, and to the point. Um, back, back when I started doing this, it was fun to do montages and drag it out and do a flashy opening and then like a cool ending, but that's just not, they just, they don't have time for that anymore. You know? Yeah. So we, we hear that a lot is like pe people with montages on your reels take them off it's it's not about creating a fun thing it's right. about getting to the heart of the acting straight away isn't it right we yeah. can do that for, for our own you know for our own vanity projects i love doing that but mm. if you're sending it out we're gonna have to take that out you know right right and so let's let's uh let's cut into the the real meat and potatoes of it what what's uh tell tell us your sort of three main things that an actor real should have or shouldn't have what's your three right. top top things Top thing, make the reel about you. It is your reel. It is not the person's reel who you're in a scene with, even if it's a famous person. I mean, I understand that we like to show that, hey, I'm in this scene opposite Denzel Washington, but Denzel Washington doesn't need a reel, mm. right? It's your reel. It gets to be about you. Um, the other thing I, I mentioned, short and sweet. You know, this, people ask, like, what the amount of a reel and you know, like I said, they're getting shorter every day, but the sweet spot is I try to keep it in the two minute range. Um, any, you know, people that have done a lot of film and television credits, they, that can be extended to like, you know, three, maybe even four minutes. But, but the people that I work with really, I, I just, I try to keep it within like a two minute range. So number two is not to let it go over, not to let it drag on. And the third thing is, is, is you want to use professional looking uh, footage, you know? So it gets to be well lit. The sound, the audio is everything. Audio can take you out of a video in, in a heartbeat. Uh, so something that looks professionally shot, even if it's not an actual television or film credit, there's things we can do to make it look like it's professional and that, you know, we get to present ourselves in the, in the best professional light as possible. So is that something you do for your clients as well? Do you, um, do you help them tweak or finesse their actual scenes to make the audio better or the visual better if we can? Oh, yeah, right. that's absolutely something to do. Yeah, yeah. And Guys, if, you know, sometimes... If you have any questions, by the way, there's a question box right down the bottom. Uh, it's a, there's a little speech bubble with a question mark. Pop something in there and we'll go through those as well. Okay. Oh, me? No, I, I, I got them my end. So if anyone listening wants to ask a question. Uh, All right. Yeah, um, I've got a question here from Barry Clifton, who's one of our MVP members. He says, uh, um, what are your thoughts on trailer style demo reels? Right. So that's, um, well, that's cool. That popped up here too. Oh, yeah. Neat. <laughs> um, so that's like a speed reel, right? A trailer like would be a speed reel. That can absolutely be used as part of your marketing uh, tools. So I've done this for clients and they'll, they'll put a link in at the end of their uh, email 
So they send it out and it's just uh, another marketing tool. And I think that's a great idea. I actually don't think, I, I might be wrong, Barry, but I actually don't think you're talking about speed rules here. I think he's talking about, um, you know, sometimes uh, a trailer is shot for a movie that's not been made yet. So a lot of people are doing them as teasers for, for films, you know, but they're shooting a trailer instead of cutting the trailer from the finished product. So mm -hmm. maybe I think he's referring to sort of a, a scene, a, a reel that looks like it's the trailer of a movie. Right. Rather than a I mean, speed again, reel of all your work. I, if I'm wrong, yeah. Barry, let me know. I, again, I, I could see it as a, as a marketing tool, if that's something that, you know, if it showcases you in your brand, I could see using that as a marketing tool. But to use that as your actual reel, um, I, I would have an actual reel, you know, right. or, or Right. So what's your advice then if, if a, an actor's watching and they don't have any footage to cut a reel from, what would be your best advice there? Well, so there's a couple of things. They can get together a team of people and, and uh, somebody, you know, uh, if there's a, a, a DP with the camera who's looking to maybe build their reel, um, you know, put together a team and you can shoot something for yourself. And this is this is where a great opportunity comes in because you have the opportunity to showcase yourself and, and to showcase what you want them to see. So maybe you have um, an idea of what you would like to, to be in and you could shoot even like a, a one minute clip that, that showcases you in that realm. Um, right. And there's also companies that do this for you as well. There's companies uh, that you can hire to write something for you. But if you're gonna do that, I would, I would absolutely do that as a, an original script because if you do a script that's already been done, then you could get compared to that. It's like, oh, I know that. Oh, they're not that person. You know, it really takes them out of it. It'll compare you to the person that actually did that. So I would, right. I would so say, don't do a popular scene, yeah. Yeah, don't do a popular scene. Um, you know, write something that's for yourself and that's going to showcase you. Great. Great. Who else have we got in here? Raya, do you have any questions? Rich, Sven, um, let us know. Stick your... Um, Stick your questions in the bottom there. So do, do you have any, um, let's talk about the opposite. Do you have any examples of, of, of stories of reels that were just horrible and tell us why? When a client's come to you and their reel has been like way out of whack? Yeah, I would say um, something that comes to mind is somebody that has something, they wanna include everything. They think they should include everything. So, I mean, they'll come to me with six, seven minute reels and that is just, and that just, because it, it's very tough, you know, it's like writing a script. You got to sometimes, you got to throw out the baby with the bathwater. And if you're looking at it yourself, it's very tough to discern, you know, what's, what should I keep? What should I toss? And there's things that I go through and look at, and I can decide pretty quickly what to keep and what to toss. So as far as, you know, nightmare stories, I mean, I can't say, they'll send me like clips from all over the internet and then, oh, look at this, what should I put in? Um, or I have a seven minute reel, can't I just keep that? <laughs> right. That okay. and half of it, and, and also, they, they also want to, tend to want to um, show the plot line or show the story and, and that's just not necessary. You just don't need that. You know, the, it, the casting people don't care about the story. They just care about you. Can you act? Can you, they want to see you act. They want to hear you. They right. See you interact. Yeah, I think a lot, a lot of people get caught up with the making sense of the story. I remember watching, I have a, a good friend that he's a very experienced actor, right? Was actually a pretty famous actor growing up in the UK, or at least very, very regularly working. And I saw his reel recently and there was just, there was 45 seconds of exposition. And I said, dude, I can't even see you yet. What, why, why are we not cutting to you straight away? And he said, well, you won't understand what's going on. I said, I, I don't think we need to understand. Let's get to you, you know? Um, right. so, so we've got some good questions here. Emily Moore um, has asked a, a question which, there's, there's a lot of different answers around this right now. And I, I'll, I'll add my bit to it, but can you put self-tape footage in a demo reel? Yeah, well, that's the thing. Well, here's the thing. So <clears throat> the, the times that we're in right now, um, 
I would say that if you don't have anything else and there's something you want to showcase and this is perfect for your brand, you can use sparingly, but as a general rule, you know, some of these auditions, these are, these come from scripts that people wrote, you know, they don't want their scripts to be out there before they've been shot. That's, that's a very dangerous uh, territory to be in. Right. Um, you know, however, if it's, uh, if you don't have anything and something's come up and you want to send something to someone personally and not put it all over YouTube or, you know, actors access, you know, it, it is where we're at. I, I would say use it, but, but very sparingly and, uh, don't get into any, uh, issues with copyright and, you know, non-disclosures and all of that. That's, that's great advice. And, you know, so to add to that, yeah, guys, like 100% don't share your self-tapes, right? Anywhere. Um, if they've been shot for an audition, because like, like Christina says, they, they're, they're still not out there and they're still copyrighted and that can get you in some hot water, right? Um, so on the flip side of that, though, um, we, we interviewed um, the casting director, Ramani Lea, recently she yes. runs the cast and director's cut and she was actually suggesting even with experienced actors like myself or my business partner richard that have a lot of footage she actually recommended even to me to to do a, a self-tape not something that's not out yet but something that's already been pre-recorded um ah. be, and actually put it into my reel amidst my highly televised projects because she said the the thing is you you don't have any of this type of work Right. And so she sent me a specific scene that's already been in a show somewhere way back when. But she said it would just would show a different side to my my character. She said, look, we know what you can do from your resume. We know you've mm -hmm. been in True Blood. We know you've been in this show. We know you've been in that show. But so it right. doesn't hurt to have a self-tape because it doesn't look like that's all you've got. It just shows. And what she wanted from me was the sort of like the, the kind, caring husband type character because everything I play is drug dealers and rock, rock stars. And she's like, we, we need to see some of this. So I think yeah. it's sort of a hybrid thing, isn't it? Definitely don't put yeah. self tapes that haven't been released yet. Um, but I think there's a, a place these days as well, because everything is all being, uh, you know, cast off reels and tapes, there might be a place of, if it's very specific to a type of character that you, ha you don't feel like you have, but you feel like you're good at. And her reasons for saying that was that she said sometimes that they'll recut actors' reels when they're recommending them to a to a, a producer because they know that this actor can do this work, but it's not on their reel. And like, we know you can do it. And here's a self tape they did ages ago, which shows they can do it. But you know, right. I, I really see that with me personally because like my reel is all kind of certain yeah. types of characters. Um, but also, also again, what I said like um, if you do have a self tape of of another uh, of something that's already been shot it'd be great not not to have it be so popular so that again they don't be like oh that guy did that yeah. you know something more thing. Thing, i would suggest yeah 100 percent um so we studio nyc has asked should you separate reels by tv reel film reel and commercial reel or not um depends on on how much footage that we're working with if you're an actor, a seasoned actor who has all three, then I would suggest separating. I definitely would suggest separating commercial. I, commercial would, should be its own entity. Film and TV can be together. However, if you have, you know, 10 film, like well-known film credits and 10 well-known TV credits, I would suggest separating the two. It all just depends on how much footage you have. And if you have different types of footage that show different characters as well. So and and probably dr drama and comedy is something that always comes up as well. Don't include those okay. two together. Yeah, separate the drama okay. and comedy. Separate if there's enough, you know? Yeah. If there's not enough to start with, then we can put it together. But also, you know, your reel is fluid. It's not going to be that way forever. So then you get more comedy or more drama, and then we get to separate. Mm. You know? uh, Sven has asked, he said, I can't do the question box thing, but what do you think of splitting a scene in your reel? So if you start with a scene, then cut into another scene and then finish with the same scene. So I think he's talking about uh, like book bookending your reel with a strong scene probably. Okay, yeah, I, I'm all for bookending. I, I, I love bookending. However, you run the risk, if it's a really good scene, you run the risk of 
them not seeing it if it's all the way at the end. Yeah. So if it's something that's like maybe a, a one line, um, you know, off the cuff something and you want to put it at the end of the reel, that's fine. But if you think it's a really strong scene and that you really think it showcases you well, then definitely put that at the beginning. You know, right. don't, don't wait for that. Yeah, I think I mean, a strong scene at the beginning is, it's funny because I do see act, actors reels as well that start with something, you know, e either they're starting with what they think the better credit is, or like you said, it's the one opposite Denzel Washington or whatever. And you think, well, you're starting it with a, and again, I've been guilty of this. My reel starts with my most recent credit and it's not my best work. And I got, you know, I had a cast director say that to me. They're like, why is this on the front? And I was like, ah, I just did it last year. <laughs> so we can all get caught up with that for sure. <laughs> Let's yeah. have a look at these questions. Um, Jessica Morrow says, can we use footage in different language to build our reel? If, if you're proficient in a different language, and I, I, I would say you could either do it two ways. You, you could, could put it in a separate reel. So let's say, you know, let's say your Spanish is your first language. You could do a Spanish reel and then an English reel. Or you could also separate it. So in, in the same reel, because I think it's important to show the two, right? Um, so you could do whichever is your strongest first and then do like a title card and then do, you know, Spanish or, or mm -hmm. English. Every second. You know, you could, you could do that. Or you could do two separate. Yeah, I, mean, I, 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 would, I would definitely advise doing, you, you should, these days with TV being so international and a lot more foreign productions and whatever, I think it's very, very good to show you can do different languages. I would probably do two reels. This is based upon what I've heard casting directors say, is do two reels, one that starts in the language of the country that you're pitching it to. So if you've got mm -hmm. like English and Spanish, then send your American agent the one that starts in English and send your Spanish agent the one that starts in Spanish, you know? Mm -hmm. um, right. Because it is, it, there's no one size fits all sort of stuff, is there? No, not at all, not at all. Um, Aaron, if you're in, in the comments, I'm not, I'm not sure I understand this question. What do you prefer, a demo reel or a scene demo? Um, are, are you, if you can clarify that in the question, do you understand that, Christina? Is it a scene um, that maybe you hired a company to do, to produce? Aaron, if you could clarify that in the, um, in the comments, we'll come back to that question. Um, Richard asks, should I have a separate reel for American accent if I'm natively British? British. He would say British, British and American, I've been here so long. <laughs> well, that probably goes back to what we just uh, said about different languages, you know? Mm. Um, it, if you have enough, if you have footage in uh, American accent, and if you have footage in a, a British accent, then you could definitely have a separate reel or put them in both and label them as such or do, like Darren was just talking about, send the American one to the American agent and the British one to the British agent. But it's definitely, you definitely want to showcase your, your, you know, your accent and, and your talent. Yeah, so, I mean, on, on that note, because editing is, um, you know, something we can do now on our computers and hosting video, we're not putting stuff on DVDs anymore, mailing it out. I don't see any harm in having a variety of different ones and your agent having them at their disposal because if, if it is, you know, for a role where they definitely want an American accent and they're very stickler on it and they're just, you know, we need this exact thing, it would be better for your agent to send them the American reel if you have one, I guess, so that they're not looking out for the, the mistakes in the accent. Um, wow. You know, I, I definitely, I, I know in my sort of repertoire, I have a drama reel, I have a comedy reel, I have short versions of both of those, I have a hosting yeah. reel, I have a voiceover demo. And now, yeah, with, with this, I, I should probably cut a specifically American one and a British one, because why not? It's, it's right. probably the thing. Why, why not have more tools at your disposal? Right. And then you, just, you can put them all up and have them accessible to uh, anyone who's casting for those yeah. specific. Right, exactly. Um, I, think, I think, guys, the important thing is to give your team, whatever resources they can to help right. you get the job, basically. It's like, you know, um, 
Okay, so Aaron said, yes, it was a company that hired to do a scene reel. So he's saying, should you have a demo reel or should you have one of those uh, scenes that are shot uh, by a specific company? Well, if, if you have enough footage for a demo reel, then definitely a demo reel. But again, a demo reel can be as short as a minute, 30 seconds. If, if all you have is the scene, then definitely start with that. But as you get more work, you know, maybe you would incorporate bits from that scene into a demo reel. You know, maybe you, you, then you get hired to do something else and then, oh, but this scene really showcases uh, my characters that, that I play, the roles that I play and that I want to play. So we could use that and then mix with your other um, footage for a demo reel. But if you're just starting out and that's all you have, then that's, you know, we get to be where we're at, you know? Right, right. That's, that's but, but know that it, it, it will change, you know, it'll change as you get more work. Great, great. Um, Danny asked, is it better to have scenes that are more intense with high motion or ones that are, are casual or less intense? I don't know that one's better than the other. It just depends on um, who you are as an actor. Are you, and who you're, what characters you're trying, you, you want to fit into, what roles you want to try to fit into. So if you want to fit into the high intense roles and you have that, that's great. <clears throat> or vice versa, if you want to fit into the less casually intense roles. It, it just, it depends what you have and, and what roles you're going for. Mm. So if you are a high intense actor, then having high intense footage to showcase that is great. But if you also... Like Darren, um, you, you said, you know, you, you didn't have footage that showed you as like the kind, loving husband. You know, if you're going for those roles and all you have is the high intense footage, then it would be best to mix some lower casual intense footage in there as well. Yeah. And I think, you know, there's a lot of conflicting in information out there on whether you should really um, be specifying yourself and typecasting yourself or whether you should be showing a range. And I, again, I think that all depends on where you're at in your career and, and how, how easy it is for your agent to pitch you. If you're, if you're in the start of your career and they're trying to get you in the door and you're the, the drug, drug addict type, then you want to mm. show that until you get those roles. But then once you sort of built up a resume and you're going for different things, then I, I think it's, it's okay to show, so not okay, but it's uh, essential to show more range. Um, Absolutely. But I think you've really got to refine it for exactly what you're trying to do at that time. And again, guys, think of, think of your reel as being fluid. People think they do it and it's done, right? But even if you hire a company like Christina's to cut your reel, there's nothing saying you can't recut different versions of it on your, you know, use iMovie or something. What, what you're really doing when you're hiring a service these days is getting that outside eye and getting your materials in line and getting that final product. But then you could make iterations of it for sure. And I think we should yeah. be iterating all the time. Yeah. And, you know, look, if there is a certain role that, that, you, that the industry is going to see you as, if it gets you in the door, by all means, yeah. play that, you know, and laugh all the way to the bank. And then say, oh, but this is what else I can do, or this is what I really want to do. Mm. But, but never be afraid to, like, you know, used to say, oh, I don't want to be pigeonholed into one role. If it's going to get me work, Pitch and hold me all you want. Right. So from an editor's perspective, you edit reels. Uh, can you cut down the other person's lines? Absolutely. <laughs> we want to cut down the other person's lines. Please, please cut down the other person's lines. We only right. want to hear you and see you. Now, we don't want to see a monologue, mind you. We want to see you interacting with the other person. But we don't we don't need all of his lines. Sometimes, you know, we can cut we can we can do it like a have them say a line and then bring it back to you to like lead into it. But please please let's cut them down. <laughs> yeah. I mean again I've I've done that with all of my scenes, uh, because there's a lot of extra info that doesn't it's not that just that you're not trying to tell the story, but it doesn't actually inform the next part so it's like in a let's say in a three-hander scene if you're talking one character and then these two characters talk about something different and they come back to you we don't need to see what they're saying over here because that's not only is it completely irrelevant but it just takes 20 seconds away from like you said you um the the one time i would say that you want to be careful of that is if you you're reacting well 
That's what um, I'm saying. It's not always about what you're saying. It's if the camera's on you and you're reacting. Right. And, and guys, actually, on that note, um, one of our first Instagram lives on here, if you go back to the Instagram lives after this one and scroll down, we have um, an amazing session with an editor from Homeland, you know, the Emmy winning show Homeland. Mm -hmm. And he has some great advice in there. He talks about how once you've booked the job, you can stay in the show. And he talks about what he looks, looks for as an editor and how to, to nail those moments where he doesn't want to cut away from your face. And I just think it's such interesting information for when you're not only cutting your show reel, but when you're on set or whatever, because, you know, just because you're not speaking doesn't mean you're not acting. Right. And, and he will talk about this in that Instagram live is that an editor is looking for those listening moments. And so, you know, if your reel has got a lot of listening in, in it, you were acting well because the editor was more engaged in your face than the person talking. There was a book I read about that too. I don't know if that was written by him. Editors um, and advice for actors, yeah. Yeah. Cutting room floor. Yeah. Yeah, oh, how, to, how to not be on the cutting room floor, yeah. It's, it's called an editor's advice for actors. Yeah, it's great. Um, okay, let's have a look at what else can we... Okay, can I use old projects? How long ago? Hmm, depends, depends how, how old. Like I have clients that have come back into the business. So, I'll put something together, but then, um, you know, we'll add in, like if it was something from a recognizable film and we just kind of like add it in as like a button at the end and be like, oh yeah, oh, that person was in, I remember that. Oh, they've been in the industry. Like they get it. They've been in it for a while. Um, but we do want to, if you're submitting something now, we do want to keep it as up to date as possible. Or what I've done before also is I've put together a reel from their old projects and, and you know, call it, you know, the old days or the olden days or, you know, back in the day, right? So, and that you could put up on your, you know, YouTube page or website. So again, it's something else that they can take a look at, but we want to try to bring it up to date if you're submitting for projects currently. So mm -hmm. that's, a, that's an interesting idea of using your older footage as just sort of more marketing materials. Yeah, something for your, for your social media, maybe. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, should I cut my own reel or should I go to a professional? What's the benefit of hiring? Mm. So it, it's, I understand with, you know, everybody's got iMovie or, you know, Adobe or whatever they've got in, in their computer systems already that comes with it and it's 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 very enticing to want to try to do it yourself and you know first there's the technical aspect but even if you get the technical aspect down the process of looking at yourself and discerning what to keep what to toss it, it's it's very challenging because it's tough to look at it to be discerning like that mm. so having an editor who's got no stake in the game except to cut you a great reel and to make you look the best that you can look is i think the benefit of that so you're really hiring the eyes not just the technical skill even if you're even if you're proficient technically you're hiring the eyes aren't you right and, it's and, like and, you know just got, just because you have a piano doesn't mean that you can play it you know somebody made that like analogy before like if you have an instrument and you can like you know play the notes, there's still the whole, you know, the aspect of the feeling behind it or, you know, what, what music theory is, you know what I'm mm. saying? Well, I also think it's important, you know, if you're, if you're going to cut your own reel, ask yourself, have you watched thousands of reels? Because if you haven't watched thousands of reels, how do you know what's a good one, what's a bad one? Right. You know, whereas someone you yeah. hire will have seen many reels and know how um let's have a look at what other questions we have here is mm -mm -mm. using a self-tape of a monologue okay if you're just starting out um okay so that's sort of what we we were talking about so monologue um or a scene you know, again, if you're just starting out and you don't have anything, it's it's fine to do a monologue and maybe, you know, or maybe like a one one minute monologue and to put it up. And then if, say, backstage or actor's access, 
says, please send me your footage, then you get to send that because that's mm. what you have. And that's okay. Um, again, a scene or a monologue, it should be lit as wonderfully, as beautifully as possible. You know, I know we're doing everything from home now and that's where the trend is, but, um, but that's really stepped up the game as well. You know, lighting, sound. Um, if you're in a scene, make sure the other person is an actor as well. And, and not just a reader, because yeah. you want to So to that. add to that, Mira, um, like personally, unless you love monologues and you're doing it for your own reason, you've got to think about the work you want to get. And if you want to work on TV, most of the time you're doing scenes, right? right. That's 99.9% mm -hmm. .9 of the time it's going to be a scene. So if you're going to self-tape something for your reel, then do a scene. And that's what something like We Audition is great for, is you can get a qualified reader, you can get another actor to work with you on that, even from home, so it's through video chat. So, so I would say to, to you, Mira, go on We Audition, start working on scenes with other actors, find a scene that connects with you, and then film it, and then, and then have a scene, because a monologue shows you in one dimension, really. It's not that, I, ha I have seen fantastic monologues, and I've seen actors with reels of monologues that are amazing, but, realistically most of the other actors that you're competing against will have scenes on their reel so you want to get yourself to that level as as much as possible so just think about what the casting director seen from other people and if you know then there are some amazing monologues out there in in films i'm not saying there's not you know but why not do a scene right because that's what's you know being used a lot that's um what else have we got um Let's see. Barry's asked, is evaluating current demos a service you offer? Yes, it is, actually. Thank you for reminding me, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> I just actually, I just started it uh, this year. So I do have a um, assessment where I take a look at your reel. I do a, a written assessment. And then we do a Zoom together. And we go over everything. I'll have you fill out a form. Uh, it's on my website. I can give that information to you at the end. Uh, fill out a form, I do a written assessment, and then a, uh, we do a Zoom together to discuss. And that is a sort of the, the demo reel assessment, it's called, and I'll, I'll leave that information. Great. And, and, oh, and what other services do you offer? Why don't, why don't we use this time to run down how yeah. you can help actors in all the different ways? Sure, sure. So yeah, so it's the demo reel assessment, and it's the reel editing. Um, I also edit montages, but that's that's another service I offer, not, not for actors, but although actors can be involved, like if you're having a birthday party for someone then I put together, you know, these beautiful clips and photos and a photo video montage for special occasions. So those are the three main things I offer. Great. And your website is LeTourDeForceProductions.com? LeTourDeForceProductions.com. Yes. Yeah. And Great. all the social, all here, LeTourDeForceProds, uh, anything under LeTourDeForceProductions, you'll find me. Great. Perfect. Yeah. Um, there was another one here of, is it, is it okay to put 15 to 20 seconds of action stuff, weapons, fighting, etc., at the end of the reel? If that's what you're going for and that is your skill, then yes. If that's something you want to highlight, then I would do its own reel. You know, um, weapons and fighting as its own entity. But if it's something that you just want to include as like, oh, a special skill and you're not really going after it, then putting it at the end is fine. Absolutely. I have done full reel with um, just that. Um, we've got from Sweet Light Bonnie. She said, where can I see good demo reel samples to get an idea of what is expected? Good demo reel samples? Well, I do have a website. There's demo reel samples there. And on my YouTube page as well. Look okay. for the course um, anything with Tour de Force Productions related, you can you can take a look. And you can see samples of reels you've cut there. So, yeah. yeah. And then, of course, I guess, Bonnie, you could then Google the actors and see if they're working and, you know, what they're up to. And that's a great way to see if the reel is working or not. Because it's hard as actors, you know, we, we, we cut this reel and put it out there. And it's like, there's never this guaranteed way of, yeah, if I do something like this, then this result will happen. So, you know, you you could have a reel that you're very happy with and then you think it's not getting any traction. You don't really know why. You don't know if it's that right. you're not getting seen by the right casting directors or that you're not good enough as an actor or if it's your reel or if it's your agent or whatever, you know? It's kind of like sending out a headshot and you, and you don't hear anything and you wonder like, you know, 
Well, what is it? Is it my is head it the headshot? Is it the male? Yeah. <laughs> um, Relitza says, if we have scenes on different languages in our demos, should we put subtitles on English for these specific scenes? So if, you, if you've got different languages in your demo role, should you subtitle them in English? Um, you, you can, yeah. But again, it depends what you're going for. Are you going for in, in that language or are you going for in English? You know, it's more about how much of footage you have and, and what exactly you're going for. But if you've got a whole reel in, in Spanish and you're sending it to an American agent, then probably best to have the subtitles. Right. Okay, well, um, let me just see if there's any other things in here. I think we've answered all these questions. Sorry, guys, just going through some stuff. Yeah. Uh, here you go. If you, if you only have an SD DVD, is that good enough quality for your reel? You know, everything is, is HD now. However, you know, there are, you know, it's, you can have it. It's just up against HD. There is a quality difference. Yeah. Um, there's really no one uses HD now. So that, tell, that tells me it may be from an older project, which is fine. Again, we would maybe put that on its own. Um, but if you're putting it with HD, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be different. The and it's going to show different. that it's older. Um, guys, yeah. here's one tip. If you don't have the footage, because a lot of times it's really hard to get the footage, there's, there's services out there called Air Checks. So if you right. go and Google that, A-I-R, as in like the air, check, C-H-E-C-K, look up actor air checks, and you can, you can find these companies that will um, send you uh, right. copies of your work from TV shows that you've been in and stuff. So, so always check those out. Um, and, and that's definitely better quality than, than a DVD. Right. Yeah, they'll, they'll get it in HD quality for you. That's the whole point. All right. Well, listen, I have to wrap up this because I've got another call after this and got to get ready for it. But um, yeah, just give us once again, tell us where people can find you and how they can hire you. And uh, thank you for your advice. Thank you, Darren. Latour de Force Productions. That's L-A-T-O-U-R-D-E Force, as in may the force be with you. I just watched Mandalorian, so. <laughs> <laughs> Latour de Force Productions dot com on all the socials, Facebook, Insta, website. Uh, I also have a free download. If you sign up, you can get a free download from there. And um, reach out. I'm uh, accessible via email. Uh, Great. As well. So. Uh, thank, thank you, you thank you to all you guys for being here we really appreciate you um thank you to all the members if you're not a member of we audition please sign up um it's, there's loads of good stuff on there um and of course one of the big benefits is you can find readers to work with on your self tapes so if you haven't got any footage you can you know, create some on there or you can earn money being a reader we have loads of readers every day earning earning cash in their downtime and i know a lot of you at home right now so that's a great way to when they, so go to weaudition.com um, and guys as a thank you if any of you are new and you haven't got a membership on here uh, ig25 is the promo code you can use for 25 percent off as well all right so nice to see you all uh, hi rebecca Patton. rebecca's one of our um highly reviewed readers on there guys guys she's been getting amazing reviews barry clifton is as well thanks to all these people um yeah, that we see on here. There's a lot of our, our top members on here. So thank you guys. And we will see you. Uh, if any of you on Clubhouse, we'll be doing a chat on there tomorrow. Um, I think at midday as well. So um, nice to see you and have a great week. Thank you, Christina. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.